Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting problem with complex numbers. We have z plus 1 over z which is the reciprocal of z equals i. So we have to find a complex number such that that number and its reciprocal are added, we get i. Is this possible? Let's go ahead and find out. And I'll be presenting two approaches and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to use the polar form because why not? It's fun. So any complex number z, as you should know, and if you're not familiar with complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist and you can go ahead and kind of learn about basics of complex numbers. So we can write any complex number z as r times e to the i theta, where theta is an argument between negative pi and pi, and r is the absolute value or the modulus or the distance from zero. They all mean the same thing, okay? Now, theta has infinitely many values, so we kind of consider the smallest one usually to be the principal value, and that's the one that is between negative pi and pi, all right? So let's go ahead and try to keep it simple and replace z with r times e to the i theta. Now what happens if you do that? We get r times e to the i theta plus 1 over r times e to the i theta equals 1. I mean i. Now we can go ahead and make a common denominator, multiply these together, r squared e to the 2i theta plus 1. And then you can kind of cross multiply here. That's going to give you r i e to the i theta. Great. Now how do you solve a problem like this, right? You have complex numbers on both sides. We kind of need to separate the real parts and the imaginary parts. So to be able to do that, let's go ahead and use Euler's formula. Euler's formula gives us that e to the 2i theta can be written as cosine of 2 theta plus i times sine of 2 theta. By the way, you could write 2 theta in parentheses because those are the arguments, but I usually don't, and I think it's understood. Plus 1, and ri and e to the i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now, next thing we're going to do is distribute r squared cosine 2 theta plus i times r squared sine 2 theta plus 1 equals i times r cosine theta and when you multiply r i times i you're going to get i squared which is going to bring in minus 1 because i squared is minus 1 or negative 1 it's going to be minus r sine theta no i right cool we have a real part and an imaginary part we have to compare those to each other for example on the left hand side the real part is r squared cosine 2 theta plus 1, and on the right-hand side, it's negative r sine theta. The imaginary part is the coefficient of i, which is r squared sine 2 theta on the left, and on the right, it's actually equal to r cosine theta. Interesting, right? So we kind of have this interesting system of equations with two variables, so it should be solvable, right? Well, probably, hopefully, who knows? <laughs> I haven't tried it, but uh, I'll probably think of some ideas that you could possibly use. But if you have a good idea, and I'm pretty sure you have a lot of good ideas, please share with us in the comment section down below. But one of the things I'm thinking about at this point, and again, I haven't planned this. I don't even know where this is going to go. But we can go ahead and divide these equations. So kind of like divide the top one by the bottom, side by side. And this is actually going to give us, r is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with negative tangent theta. Now, from here, we can go ahead and, you know, cross multiply, and then put r squared on the same side, so on and so forth. So that should kind of give us the r in terms of theta, and then we could hopefully bring it back here into one of these equations and substitute here or here. Okay, make sense? That's one idea. Another idea that I have and something that I'd like to share with you is 
because of the presence of sine and cosine, squaring both sides of these equations. So if you square the top equation, you're going to get r squared sine squared, which is going to give you r squared cosine 2 theta plus 1 squared. And if you square the bottom equation, you're going to get r squared cosine squared theta. And then it's going to give you r to the fourth sine squared 2 theta. And then add these equations. This is going to give you r squared times sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1. So this will be r squared. And then from here, you're going to get another equation. But again, there's going to be a lot of complications. Hopefully, that can be solved. And they'll give us a good result. Again, this part is left as an exercise for you. But please don't me don't hate me for that okay i just want you to try and let me know and let everyone else know uh, what you're going to be getting from here so that's the first approach at least i tried it didn't get anywhere at least right now but hopefully it will let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative approach which we should probably normally use all right here's my equation z plus one over z equals i and I'm going to multiply everything by z, so it's going to give me z squared plus 1 equals iz. And then I'll bring the iz over here and turn this into a quadratic equation. How nice, right? So here's one thing to keep in mind. If z is a real number, obviously z plus 1 over z cannot be complex or imaginary, right? Anyways, so how do you solve it? The easiest way, the quadratic formula negative b notice that b is the coefficient of z in this case and that happens to be negative i so negative b is going to be i plus minus the square root of b squared which is going to be i squared minus 4 i squared is remember that negative 1 negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 so this becomes i plus minus the square root of negative 5 over 2 but the square root of negative 5 is what square root of 5i, right? And the whole thing is divided by 2. Of course, there are two square roots. Negative 5 has two square roots, and the plus minus takes care of them. Make sense? Now, since we have the i, like we're adding the multiples of i, we can kind of write this as 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. All of that is multiplied by i. Does that look familiar? Do you smell the golden ratio you get the golden flavor yes you should right anyways this kind of gives us the solutions are those the only solutions yes because this is quadratic let's go ahead and take a look at the result from wolfram alpha and see if that's going to be any different and tada is that the same right we have one plus minus root five over two multiplied by i so what they did here was basically they distributed that, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.